Hello, I want to talk today about an issue we see with shrinking technology nodes. One of the things you see quite a bit as technology nodes shrink is that the resistance of metallization is increasing due to overall global wire length increasing, certainly wire length or wire width decreasing, and also thickness coming down a little bit. So with increasing resistance of interconnecting wires and metals, um, there are some tricks we can do in layout to try and help ourselves um, with these solutions. So today I'm really just going to look at um, the metallization metal one or metal zero if you're on FinFET, but the local metal of a of a MOS device. So if we look at the resistance that we have in drains and sources, let's just bring on a highlighter here for people. Um, if we look at the resistance we have in drains and sources, really there are three types of resistances that we're dealing with. We're dealing with basically metal resistance, the resistance of contacts, and the resistance of diffusion. And these three are in series. So really where they're built up, you can see the cross section here. We have our metal on our source and drains, we have our contacts, and we have our salicylated diffusion, which is N plus diffusion in this case, because we're using M mosses, and the salicide I'm representing in blue. So with this, if we come over here a little bit um, and actually look at the layout of this transistor, we can see a traditional layout of a transistor. We have the source here on the left, we have the drain on the right. Of course, right now, these are actually interchangeable. Um, and what we have here, as you can see, is we have basically four contacts. So we have a contact here, contact here, contact here, and contact here. We have four contacts on the source, and we have four contacts on the drain. So what I've tried to represent in this case is a simple model of the resistance in the source. So again, we have basically the resistance of the metal. We have the resistances of each of the contacts. They're in parallel with each other. And then the resistance of the salicylated diffusion. What we're going to look at is a really, really simple technique of how we can actually optimize the resistance of these. And we're going to be focusing primarily on actual metal resistance. With the metal, what I'm going to do here, I guess, with the metal, I've, I've come along here and I've highlighted the metal now in blue. So the metal is standing out. And I've put arbitrary figures, completely arbitrary figures beside these of 10 microns. So the transistor channel, let's call it the channel width is 10 microns and the metal width relative to that would be one microns. We know that the resistance of a conductor is dictated or is is specified by the length divided by the width multiplied by the sheet resistance. Now, to keep the calculations here pretty easy, I'm just going to make a big assumption that the sheet resistance of metal one is one ohm per square. So just kind of keep it easy um, and keep the maths easy. What we do know, of course, is that the length of any conductor is parallel to the current flow direction and the width of that conductor is perpendicular to the current flow direction. So length is dependent on basically where we're going to connect to this device from. So I've removed the contacts here and you can see that there's no contacts, we're just dealing with metal. Is 10 the length or is one the length? Well, it really depends on what we're actually going to be doing. So I'm gonna set up two scenarios here. And I guess scenario here, what I'm going to set up first is I'm going to say length is going to be equal to 10. And the way we actually make length 10 is we will take the transistor itself, we'll copy them down. Um, we put them down here. We don't actually need the numbers. So we can just get rid of the numbers here. Um, and I'm going to assume right now that if length is 10, that effectively what I'm doing is I'm connecting into this transistor from this direction. So if length is 10 in this case, obviously width is going to be equal to one. Now with that calculation, we can see we're going to have basically a 10 over one multiplied by our arbitrary one ohm. Um, and this is going to give me basically a 10 ohm connection into this device. However, what's amazing is just by choosing a different connection in this device, so a different direction, I can now basically come up with a second scenario. And in this case, I am deciding to connect in what we would call broadside, so laterally into the device. And right now, I'm going to make a nice wide connection into this such that now the length is one. So I'm going to have one over 10 multiplied by one, which is giving me a 0.1 ohm connection into this device. Now that's incredible. By just changing this, 
I've gone from 10 ohms to 0.1 of an ohm, which is a hundred times less. Um, and considering how resistive metallization is now, that simple connection, that simple change can be massive. Now, of course, while it's a hundred times less in terms of resistance, doing a very, very wide connection like this as well would have a very, very big capacitance hit. And that's not always ideal. Sometimes this might be good if it's a supply, having capacitance on supply, maybe not so, or maybe okay. But if it's a signal, maybe not so good. But there is a really simple technique that we can do is still have a broadside connection. But in this case, what we're actually going to do is we're going to come along here and we're going to connect now into the middle of that device. And by doing that, I am having the connection or having the resistance. Um, and it's such a simple little technique by just changing where I've connected from, from the bottom to the middle, just doing that, I've reduced the resistance of the metallization by a half. And those are the little techniques that we can talk about another day. But for now, thank you very much for your attention.